Hey, so imagine you're building your decentralized application and there are certain transactions you want to output more details about. In this video, I'm going to show how you can do that and what are the transaction logs, how, how they're structured and how you can utilize it when building your own application. I'm going to use uh, this transaction, which is an ERC-20 token transfer transaction as an example. And we're going to cover the topics and the data attribute and how you can decode it yourself. Um, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to use the Ethers.js uh, library. You can use any other uh, library that has similar functionality. You can use Web3, you can use the alternatives that are not based on JavaScript. So let's create a new node project. Let's initiate packages.json and then let's add ethers as our only dependency here. Now we can go into the node console, grab ethers. And now to communicate with the blockchain, because we're gonna need to grab the transaction receipt, um, all we have is a transaction hash. So we need to look up the topics and the data associated with that transaction using its hash. To do that, we're gonna need to create a, a provider object. You can learn more about uh, providers on uh, Ethers documentation. In this case, I'm going to use the Infura provider class. I've already created a test project in Infura. I'm going to need the project ID. You can do the same. You can sign up on Infura. It's free of charge. You can create a project and just grab its ID. Um, to create a provider, we're going to run new Ethers providers. Infura provider. The first argument is, I believe, Homestead, which stands for mainnet. And then the second one is our Infura project ID. Okay, now that we have our provider, we can grab the transaction hash we're interested in and then call await provider get transaction receipt. And then once it resolves, we have our transaction details. What we're most interested in are the logs uh, array. For this transaction, there's there was only one event emitted, so the logs contains only one object. Let's look into that. So the first object inside the logs. Now we have our topics, and then we have our data. Uh, because this is not an anonymous event, the first uh, element in our topics uh, array is going to be the hash of the event signature. This is useful uh, because you can use it to listen on specific events. Let's say you want to listen on all transfer events um, across several smart contracts. Let's say you want to listen on different NFT collection transfers in your application you're going to need this topic uh, to filter all of the events and only end up with the transfer events. So how do you get this from uh, an event like this? You, you need to hash the signature of the event, which in this case is transfer and then a list of types of your attributes. So you ignore this, you ignore the names, you just get, you just list the types of the parameters of your event. So in this case, it's gonna be address, address, and then there's an integer. So then you're gonna to need to transfer this to an array of bytes, which you'll then hash using another utility method from ethers. So you'll do two UTF-8 bytes, 
and then you'll use catsec 256 and you should end up with your signature hash that is exactly the same as you see here on etherscan um, so what are the other topics that we have in this uh, event log for this event we have two parameters that are indexed and those are included in our topics so the first one like i said is the transaction signature hash the others are all the indexed uh, attributes in your event so the second one would be your address from which the tokens were sent and then the third one here is the address of the recipient you can notice that the, the last attribute here is not indexed um, and generally it's because the topics are limited in size they can only be 32 bytes anything beyond that is going to be hashed so it makes no sense to use it unless um, to use it in filtering or searching unless you actually know the initial value so that's why here the value here uh, of this transfer event was included in our data attribute so let's see how we can use ethers to decode and get the same value here we're gonna we're gonna use the default abi coder decode method this is going to take two attributes one is an array of types here we only have one integer so we're going to pass un256 the second attribute is our encoded data value which we can grab from the event uh, transaction receipt and if we run it we get a big number which we can transform to a string doing this and as you can see we got the value of how many tokens were transferred within this event within this transaction excuse me and the value is exactly the same as we have on the etherscan page for that same transaction there are hopefully this was helpful uh, for you to in building your own applications and understanding how um, data stored in transactions describe what happened within the transaction. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.